Hello friends, let us talk about extraocular eye muscles and we're going to kind of run through how it would look like in terms of a dissection. So we'll start with um, what you can see when you first remove the first portion of the frontal bone and then we'll start reflecting some of these muscles in order to see a clearer view of some of these other regions. So what we're looking at right now are um, is a superior view of the orbit. What has been removed right here is portions of the frontal bone. So we've removed portions of the frontal bone. Additionally, we've removed a considerable amount of fat. There is a lot of fat that is going to be within the orbital region, really serving to protect the eyeball. And in order to see the majority of these muscles, that has to be removed first. And generally for me, when I'm doing this uh, dissection, the very first thing I try to look for is uh, what is called the frontal nerve. This is this structure right here. Now I don't have this on the list of structures because I'm talking muscles, but for me really kind of key is finding this particular nerve because it's usually the first thing you see. Sorry, this looks kind of goofy. I'm learning how to use this. So frontal nerve is this particular nerve right here. And it's generally the first thing that you see. You can almost, you often can see it through the fat. And it helps guide me in terms of being able to locate the other muscles in this region and know about where I am located. And so generally just inferior to that frontal nerve, the frontal nerve is a branch of V1, is the levator palpebri superioris. Okay, levator palpebri superioris. And this is the one that is going to directly affect the eyelid. So whereas the other muscles that we're gonna talk about, all the rest of these muscles here, uh, are going to move the eyeball, the levator palpebri, and that's what we're thinking about here, eyelid, levator palpebri superioris is going to move the eyelid. Now we do have on your list of structures the superior tarsal muscle. This is generally something we probably should have kept more with the learning objectives because you can't really tell the difference between uh, fibers of the superior tarsal muscles and fibers of the levator palpebri superioris. These are going to be um, muscles that are under the control of autonomics. Um, so if you think about uh, blinking and so forth when you're not thinking about it, uh, superior tarsal muscle is really playing a role there. So levator palpebri superioris muscle is going to be just directly underneath the frontal nerve. Now you can see kind of a little division right here. All right, so this is levator palpe palpebri superioris and you can see just deep to or just underneath the levator palpebri superioris is a superior rectus. So this is an important thing to note. When you're looking at a view here without any muscles reflected, it's not the superior rectus that's the most superior thing. It's the levator palpebri superioris. So superior rectus is just deep to the levator palpebri superioris. And we'll see a view of this in a moment where we've reflected the levator. All right. A few other things that you can see here. Right here, this is going to be medial, and this is going to be lateral. And we know this for a few reasons. One of the main reasons is right here is that lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland, remember, is going to be located in the lateral, superior lateral portion of the orbit. So I see a little muscle fiber right here. We're talking lateral rectus and we'll see a view where we've removed some of the bone a little bit more here so you can see it clearer. And so now we gotta figure out what this muscle is. What is this most medial muscle? You would think it's medial rectus. But in this particular case, um, the, and not this particular case, most case, all cases really, is the most medial structure when you're looking at a superior view in terms of muscles is gonna be the superior oblique, all right? So superior oblique is going to be superior to the medial rectus, which we can't, can't quite see in this view because you have to reflect the superior oblique in order to see it. Another reason I know why, or why I know that this is superior oblique is I see this little structure right here. And this is the trochlea. 
The trochlea is a fibrous um, structure that allows for the tendon of the superior oblique to basically change positions. Um, instead of going straight forward, it kind of moves back in order to allow for that, the tendon of superior oblique to attach on the sclera of the eyeball in order to, to direct the specific movements of the superior oblique. All right, so just to review what we see here, superior oblique is gonna be, uh, and remember this is the most superior view, no muscles reflected. Superior oblique is medial. Levator palpebri superioris is the most superior thing here. Superior rectus is just deep to it. And you can see a little bit of lateral rectus right here um, on this lateral portion of the orbit. All right, so now we have reflected a muscle, and that muscle is the levator palpebri superioris. I'm getting better at this thing. All right, and you can see that it, these are both the levator palpebri superioris. All right, so you have a really nice view at this point of the superior rectus. Superior rectus right here. There, we're still, we have not reflected the superior oblique. We still know we're looking at the superior oblique because I still see that clear trochlea right here. So this is superior oblique. And you can still see a little bit of that lateral rectus in this particular view. All right. So in order to see that superior rectus in terms of, the, of its entirety, you really have to reflect the levator palpebri superioris. All right, moving to an image where we have removed a little bit more of the fr uh, frontal bone here, and we can see a much nicer view of that lateral rectus. So lateral rectus, as its name would suggest, suggest is going to be more laterally placed. Um, it is going to uh, be innervated by the abducens, which you can see right here, kind of popping in in order to innervate this muscle. And in this particular image, we're still looking at the superior oblique over here. We have still yet to reflect it because I can still very much see that trochlea here. Another reason that I know that I'm on this lateral side is because I can see the lacrimal gland right there. So lacrimal gland, remember, superior lateral. All right, so we've done a few other things here. We are not looking at the superior oblique anymore. The superior oblique in this particular image is right here. It has been reflected. And at this point, I don't see the trochlea very clearly here or a muscle going through, or a muscle tendon going through the trochlea as clearly here. So we know that we are looking at the medial rectus at this point. So in order to see that superior oblique, or excuse me, in order to see the medial rectus, that superior oblique has to be reflected. One other image that you can see clearly at this point is the inferior rectus. All right, so let's figure out why we can see the inferior rectus now and why we could not see it before. In this portion right here, we have completely removed or you can maybe see a few remnants of it right here. The levator palpebri, the superior, or superior oblique has been reflected here. The superior rectus has been reflected as well. And so now we're looking at extremely deep structures. Also, you can note here, I'm looking at the optic nerve that has been cut. So that's another key clue here. In order to see that inferior rectus in a superior view of the orbit, you have, to, you have to cut through or incise a portion of the optic nerve. So you can see that inferior rectus deep to the optic nerve when you're looking at a superior view. We still have this lateral rectus over here because that's really the only muscle that you're ever going to really have over in this region. So lateral rectus is going to be located over here. Now, one thing I want you to note, and hopefully you were observing this, but if not, I'm going to point it out right now. I have all of the extraocular eye muscles here, except one. Which one? I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Which one are we missing here? Which one have I not talked about? I have not talked about 
I.O. or the inferior oblique. And the reason I haven't talked about it is because this particular video we're focusing on this superior view of the orbit and you cannot easily see that inferior oblique from this particular view. You would have to move the inferior rectus and get almost totally down to the bone in order to see the belly of the inferior oblique clearly from this view. So it is very unlikely that we would ever test in terms of seeing an inferior oblique from a superior view. Fortunately, you can see it fairly well from an anterior view, which is also something that we are going to talk about in these sets of videos. All right, so hopefully you get a good idea of where these things are located um, in terms of the superior view, which is one of the best ways to really dissect and visualize some of these extraocular eye muscles. So to review really quickly while we're still here, if we're talking lateral muscles, think the lateral rectus. That's good, that makes sense, that's what its name suggests. I always try to look for the lacrimal gland to help me get oriented. If we were talking medial, or excuse me, uh, muscles that are going to be kind of in the midline portion of the orbit, you'll have the levator palpebri superioris, which is most clearly seen here. Just deep to that is the superior rectus, which you can see a little bit better here with levator reflected. And then in order to see the inferior rectus, you have to incise that optic nerve to see it right there. When we're looking at a medial view, so recall we're looking at a medial view here, you have your superior oblique is going to be the most superior of the medial muscles. And then in order to see the medial rectus, you have to reflect that superior oblique in order to see it fairly clearly. So we, this is from the superior view of the orbit. We will have a separate video looking at the anterior view and discussing the extraocular eye muscles. Thank you for your time, and as always, please, please feel free to reach out to me or my colleagues via email uh, for any anatomical questions. Thanks for your time.